Welcome to Candid Travels, Texas. Hey, so um, today uh, we're going to just, it's a Sunday, and we're now going into February. As you can see, uh, my oak tree still got some leaves. Uh, the con tree's not having any leaves. But uh, we're going to be going to go to Pease Park just to see what's up. I heard that they had some kind of a, um, like a stick forest. I don't know if it's going to be there, but we'll go there and take a quick peek. And then afterwards, uh, we'll go to church. We go to church at night a lot with the young adult services at Austin Stone right now because we're in Austin, Texas. Uh, when we go to church, we, we often go to different churches to worship at in Houston, one of them being Lakewood Church. I grew up going there. Um, sometimes we'll go to like Sugar Creek Baptist Church in Sugarland, Texas. Anyway, uh, but while we're on the subject, I have a tactical tip for everyone out there at Canada Travels Texas and at the ATX ITAC family. Now, this tactical tip actually comes from the world of professional actors and clergy. So one of the things that professional actors and clergy what we do it's a skill set that is something that you you do all the time it's not like you just you master it and then you never do it again right it's kind of like you you got to hydrate yourself and drink water you do it like every day you know or more than once a day but what it is is vocalizing and um uh just reading out loud either with other people, like you have a partner and you read to them and they, you, they read one paragraph, they read another paragraph back and forth. You can read the phone book and practice pronouncing different types of unusual words, something unfamiliar, or just any written material, magazine, to read it out loud. Kind of it, The reason uh, both clergy and professional actors, we do this on a regular basis, vocalists, musicians, um, Anybody who is a communicator, CEOs of companies, I'm one, right? Uh, so what, that's a great tactical tip. So what you want to do is spend at least 10, 15, 30 minutes, an hour, an hour, however long you want that's comfortable for you, and read out loud. So the number one tactical tip I would recommend all professional actors who are great have done this, whether they want to admit it or not, as, is that out of all the books that exist today, the one book that has influenced the current world as it is today in 2018 is the Holy Bible. So what I would recommend, uh, a very good tactical practice, because when you do this, what happens is you end up strengthening, modulating, and making more efficient your central nervous system, your peripheral nervous system, which will help you in anything you do, including combat, when you read out loud. So one of my suggestions, and I highly recommend this because this book is the most influential book in the world and on the whole planet today. Uh, th this is I, I know people will debate it, but the reality is most of the, the, this book world speaks English and is of, from Western civilization. People may or may not want to admit it, but it's a fact in, in the world today in 2018. And the entire Western civilization is based upon this one book, the Holy Bible. Bam, right there. Now, what I recommend is instead of reading like a version that's really, really uh, hard to understand, there's something called the Message Bible, which is the Bible in contemporary language, large print edition. So, oh, by the way, a father's love, that's God, the Heavenly Father's love, provides, protects, and teaches. Okay, that's Proverbs 4, 1 through 9. So, like, what you could do is you could just go to Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 9. Proverbs 4, so this is, now, once again, when you're reading the Bible, the chapters don't mean anything. So 
So you got to remember these number numbering systems have nothing to do with subject matter. It's just the way the scribes in the old days. Uh, so you got to read it based upon subject. So chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Listen, friends, to some fatherly advice. Sit up and take notice so you'll know how to live. I'm giving you good counsel. Don't let it go in one year and out the other. When I was a boy at my father's knee, the pride and joy of my mother, he would sit down and drill me. Take this to heart. Do what I tell you. Live. Sell everything and buy wisdom. Wisdom. Forage for understanding. Don't forget one word. Don't deviate an inch. Never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her and keep her eye on you. Above all, before you do this, get wisdom. Write this at the top of your list. Get understanding. Throw your arms around her. Believe me, you won't regret it. Never let her go. She'll make your life glorious. She'll garland your life with grace. She'll festoon your days with beauty. All right. So that's basically that was some a verse I wrote down. Or what I've been doing, and I highly recommend it, just go from the very beginning, Genesis, and read the book from cover to cover. Because it is in chronological order. It is the history of the universe, the biblical history of the universe, how it began. So, okay, here we go. Genesis, heaven and earth. God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light. And light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated for light from the dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. Anyway, so what I do is I'll read a little bit, maybe like that much minimum, a day out loud. You know, in, 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 in solitude a lot of times, um, which is fantastic. I, I really believe in reading in solitude. You can hear yourself. You can feel your body. You can do body-centered sensations. But once again, the reason I recommend the Bible, whether you believe in it or not, is that this book has influenced the world and the universe tremendously, especially as of today. And so um, you can read other books, but I think that this is a requirement for anybody who is educated because it is the best-selling book of all time. And most People who are educated and great at what they do have read it from cover to cover. I have. And so it's, a, it's an amazing experience, okay? Um, so one of the cool things I also do is like, let's say I read the Bible. And I know there's a lot of controversy about flat earth and all that kind of stuff. But what I did was I read the Bible and I, I, I took notes on what it was saying. And what I noticed that according to the Bible, the universe is not really flat. It's actually like my wife, after I, I showed her these drawings, is actually more like a, uh, like a snow globe. <laughs> okay, so I kind of drew this. You can go to the Bible and then, I mean, study Bibles have this type of thing, but you should draw. So here's the North Pole and the Antarctica that we've never mapped the Antarctica, have we? It's actually a wall of impenetrable ice and it's connected with a kind of a, like a shield that can't be penetrated. And then according to, underneath there's water coming up from springs. And originally there was a fluid canopy that surrounded the entire uh, universe. And it, during the deluge, it went from up from underneath and the flood came in, coming down to the top. So water crashing in the middle. So it's actually like a, a, like a round bubble, uh, the universe inside a bubble, you see. So the, the land is here. Anyway, uh, and then from the top view, you've got the sun and the moon, and they kind of rotate around, right, with the ga galaxies. Now, um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say anything controversial, but this is the biblical description of the universe. So for whatever you want to believe, that's up to you. But you, it's good to know the biblical sense, because nowadays in school, you're, no, you're rarely taught this part. Right, a lot, especially the I was I'm a lot older, so I was I was taught this in in school. But but a lot of younger people, even in Christian parochial schools, are not teach are not 
given these teachings, okay? So another thing I did was, like, as I'm reading through Genesis, I will write down the, the, this is the family tree of the human race, created by God, according to the, to be God-like, with a nature akin to God, blessed the whole human race. So that's God, because the, in the G, Hebrew Bible, this is what it's from originally, you're not supposed to, like, write it out. So then Adam and Eve and Cain, and these are all his descendants. You can write it down and see how much, how much they live, now how many the lives they live. Anyway, so that's, that's an important uh, thing. You can, you can read a phone book. If, you, if, you, if you're not re- wanting to do that, when you enunciate, when you speak and you read, your eyes, your brain takes on opportunities to read, you can enunciate and you have to think in order to... Um, yeah, in order to, to, to get your brain, keep it young and fit and tactile, tactically sound, right? Um, some, some people, when you're like just exhausted, I mean, you could do this too. You don't feel like reading. Uh, there's something, the Buddhists, they, they actually do something in Japanese Nichiren Buddhism, which is just... Just say that over and over again out loud. The key thing is out loud. Now, if you read the Bible and you believe in God, it was very specific that God spoke the world into existence. So there's something very specific about hearing and speaking. Okay, and hey, you know, out of all of the professions in the whole world, um, the, the, the profession that generates the most money are musicians. Isn't that interesting? Because we speak, musicians like, create sound. So, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo in the Nichiren Buddhism, which is a Japanese form of Buddhism, um, it's a practice which is not really a religion. It's a physical practice like martial arts, in my humble opinion. And what it is, is uh, it is the practice of sound. So, myoho renge kyo in Japanese literally means mystic law. And it's the mystic law of the practice of sound. Okay? So, um, they're, like if you end up getting into it, they, they have something called gongyo at the beginning, at the end of the night, which is not just nam yo ho ring go, nam yo ho ring go. Tina Turner, who is, she's originally a Baptist lady who is a, a very well-known singer. She's older now, but she's still performing sometimes. She practices this, and she also is a Christian. So, eh, some Christians don't like it, but hey, just as just sharing with you what's up there and not there, all right? So, um, like, she actually demonstrated this a little bit, and uh, she um, demonstrated gongyo. So, um, gongyo is like that. Basically, these words mean nothing. That's the whole point. It doesn't mean anything, but you're exercising your vocals. You're exercising the sound of the universe, okay? And so, like, uh, gongyo begins sort of like, I'm not going to do all of it. It's going to take a while. We won't get to get it to go out but when the sun's still out. Yeah, so anyway, it goes like this. And so forth. So if you, you can even look up Tina Turner chants. It's called chanting. So I highly recommend this as a tactical tip. There's healing. Uh, and I don't want to use the word healing, okay, because... We're already healed, right? We got all that we need inside, but the best, better word would be uh, fitness. It actually would increase one's fitness, energy, joy of life, that kind of a thing, okay? In fact, I, Allison and I both uh, practice this type of a thing, and we actually met at, uh, at an organization that was connected to the chanting practice. Um, once again, it's, it's not a religious thing. It's, it's kind of like practicing martial arts or, or, you know, dancing, exercising, in my humble opinion. Okay. I know the Japanese consider it a religion, but, um, I don't have a, I don't think it's, there's a problem with it because what you do is not necessarily what you believe. So that's another thing to remember, right? So anyway, tactical tip is about things you can do.
All right, so once again, I would say read out loud. Great tactical tip. All right, let's head out now on this fine Sunday. Get busy, buddy. Everybody poops. <laughs> I guess he's done. Max All right. pooped. Wipe this butt. And as you can see, this is how he's restrained. He has a harness, and this is connected to the seat belt. It's a nice little tip for you have a, big dogs, especially. That way, he is hooked in. So when he gets in here, I have this. It's almost like a tactical climbing hook, almost, huh? When you go rappelling. And it goes in. It goes in like that. Click. That's it, and he's good. This is a cranky bone. Listen, it makes a weird sound. So, uh, some tactical tips on puppies. Max is probably the youngest dog I've ever owned. And uh, <laughs> uh, he's, what, three months? We got him. And uh, the youngest dog I've ever owned personally. Now, I've trained adult dogs for like, you know, service and tacticals and that kind of thing. You know, like, you know, service dogs, right? I've, tra I've trained them. But they're usually older. And the old, youngest dog I've ever had is, was only six months old when I, was, when I was younger, when I was a kid. So he was three months old. So there's this biting thing. Uh, hi, I highly recommend a dog trainer online. His name is Eric. Let tender, L E T N D E R or R E. Anyway, you can look. He's the amazing dog training man. But he he reminds people, and this is just a general rule. Puppies tend to like they get mouthy, and it's the way they communicate with each other. But sometimes, especially with a bigger dog, they're just trying to communicate, and they could bite you. And and it's unacceptable behavior, but it's not a behavior problem. It's just part of the, the nature. So the way to to kind of prevent that is to not purposely or unintentionally reinforce that behavior. So, for example, unintentionally re reinforcing behavior, I, I've had to learn that not to do that. It's like, when he's playing, he's going gah, 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 like that, and you just play with him, and, and you're happy, he actually thinks it's okay. So, you can't play with him that way. Like, when I was doing the Kylo Ren sword thing, I was kind of unintentionally reinforcing that, that mouthy behavior. So, uh, Obviously, I've stopped doing that. He's also getting older. He's four months old now. So, um, you know, I'm going to stop doing that. Um, and then also the intentional uh, uh, reinforcing the behavior is when, when, the, when the puppy is mouthing and you go, no, no, no. They actually want that. They want reaction from you. So the best thing you do is ignore them, you know, when they're doing behavior that's not good. All right. All right. Let's get in my truck. We're gonna head out. Oh, what hell out? Wow. Still on my truck. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Just fell out. I really did not plan that to fall out. I really did not plan for that to fall out. Hey, could that be evidence for God intending that? That was weird. All right, I opened my truck door and it fell out. All right, so let me see if we get to Peace Park before sunset and see if we can see what it's like now in February. All right, and upcoming Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Hey, Max. Hey Max, how are you? Good boy, good boy. Woo! All right, thanks for joining us. All right, there's the ATX sign. We're in downtown Austin, aren't we? Yeah, we're by the Whole Foods. By the Whole Foods. We're gonna go to Peace Park and see what, what's there. The volleyball courts, I don't know. Allison, can you see it to my left? Not yet. Not yet. But we used to come here on Saturday mornings to play volleyball. If you watch our past episodes, so much fun. But I haven't been getting invites. So maybe David 
Gonzalez. Oh, here they are. Here they are. The volleyball So this court. is on the other side of Pease Park. Pease Park is actually inside, like beyond the trees. You see the trees? So I'm going to drive through the back woods and see what we can see. I don't know if we're going to see much. Allison and I are a little late here. The sun's setting. Our church service is at 7 p.m. But uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn left here and we'll see what you can... When I turn, you'll get to see more of the dark. But here we are. I'm going to drive into Peace Park. Now, this it's is also the location where in Austin, we have something called Eeyore's birthday once a year, where women go walking around with no clothes and they let their breasts hang out. Allison hasn't done that yet. <laughs> no. But it's called Eeyore's birthday. And kids go, it's not dirty or anything like that. Here in Austin and in Texas yeah, in general. Yeah, everyone's just having fun there. Right, it's it's not, it's more like, I guess if you go to Europe, if you go to Amsterdam, women don't wear tops. And I don't have a problem with that. The Lord made our bodies, right? So this is the area we have Eeyore's birthday, but I don't think that, it's like a little stick village. It looks like a hobbit village. You know, my neighbor Elijah Wood played Frodo Baggins, um, but this is a back road, I believe, to get to the front of Peace Park, and I'm almost there. So Navigate. we're here, Peace Park. So this is what Peace Park actually looks like, uh, where the the kids play. All right, let's go and let's go out there with uh, Max. He's a kid still, so here we go. Let's look and see what it's like. I guess it's not here anymore. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's somewhere in this park. So here's Peace Park where the kids play. It's a Sunday evening. There's Allison. Look at how pretty she is. I got the camera. Woohoo! All right. Now look around here. Here's Max. He's got his uniform on. He's looking at the other dogs. There's other dogs here. Look. When did he eat? Here's a guy with his dogs. He ate at um, four. At four? Four so thirty. It's been an hour, so I can let him run around a little bit. He's eaten. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. So as you can see, I have my leash is actually tied right around my belt here. Now, let me pull that. Okay. It's tied on my belt, and he just walks with me. So that's another dog walking tactical tip. So the key thing when you walk a dog is you don't, you want that leash to be kind of see loose because the moment he pulls it's called opposition reflex. So you got to stop. Okay, so he's pulling right now so I'm stopping. Then once it's loose I go, "Come on, Max. Come on." Call to him. To he wants to play with those dogs. Now, Max wants to play with the other dogs, but here's another tip. You never let your dog do what he or she wants when he or she wants it, but when you want it. Because otherwise they won't obey, and in a time of emergency, they won't listen to you. And that's for their safety, okay? Plus their dogs. Your people, your number one. Intel, and the girls behind us. <laughs> they go to University of Texas, and instead of that, it's still up, the Stick Village. So we're gonna keep walking, and we can see if we'll be able to see the Stick Village before the sun sets. Yeah. And here's some rocky terrain. I don't know what that is. Shoal Creek. Is that Shoal Creek? Named after the famous General Station in Texas. General George A. Custer, that's him. And there is a Shoal Creek in the 19th century. Here. Mission accomplished, we found it. Look all around me. It feels like uh, fairyland. Feels like kind of like you know the the Sherwood Forest Fair. Look, it's straight ahead. Allison, look. Woo, you look oh, yeah, nice I today, and she looked nice on the Sunday. Oh, there it is. We're quickly approaching, and Max is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already knew that. Okay. He wants to say hello to the other dogs, but just ignore that part. All right, we're gonna show you the little stick. Oh, wow, look at that. The little kids running around in the little stick village. It's an art installation. It'll be taken down, I believe, February. 
Look at this. This is all like, I believe, done by hand. Isn't that amazing? It's so fun. Let's go around this side. Come on. Let's go. Let's go around this side. Woo! What a maze. Look at this. Come through here. Hey, Max. Look at this. Is Max going to try to eat it? I think you were wrong. He's not going to try to chew it. Yeah, this maybe I'm wrong. He won't eat it. Because it's not on the ground. It's not on the ground, see? Whoa. So anyway, this is the cool, cool stick village. Whatever it's called. I don't even think there's a label for it. Wow, look at this, and we can look through a window. Hey, let's look through this window. And there's another doggy here, see through the window. Is this an off-leash area? It's an off-leaf it? All right, okay, that's it. To the truck now on this trail, but look behind me. You can see the top of the Capitol building of Austin from here at Pease Park. And those of you who are visiting Austin, go to the South Lawn and look for the tribute to Texas school children. There's a little boy with a ball cap doing this. That's me when I was in church, and that's a skyline in Austin. The church, Austin Stone, we held it in um, the Austin, Stephen F. Austin High School uh, gymnasium. So, uh, yeah, so it's the one by where we are when we're in Austin. And so we're turning in now. Right, so this is my church in Austin, the Austin Stone. Welcome, main service kids and students. We're actually at the uh, Austin's High School building, and there's Max. Hey, Max. So I got my Bible here. Max is here. Allison's up there. She's eager to go to church. So thanks again for joining us here at Candid Travels, Texas. Um, yeah, enjoy the tactical tips, that little st stick village art installation at Pease Park. Pease Park's a great place if you're here in Central Texas in Austin. Okay, we're heading in. Woo! There's Max. Come on, Max, we're going to church. We're going to church. We're going to church. All right, here we are. Okay, we're actually at Austin High School. We're going to church. Going to church. Howdy. Happy Sunday. Yes, happy Good Sunday. to see you. See? Hi. Yay. All right. There's Allison right there. All right. Thanks again. Cool. Happy Palentines today. Palentines rather than Valentines. <laughs> Oh, there's coffee too. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Maybe. Maybe coffee. Well, you want coffee? No. Almond milk. to go in. It's not time yet. Almost time to go to church. church now. There's Max. We're a little early. It's the worship time.
tidbit for those, it's like a teaser for all those of you at Candid Travels Texas for traveling. So it's now February and between now and July here at the University of Texas Harry Ransom Center, there is going to be an amazing exhibit called Vaudeville. Now, for those of you who are involved with acting and theater, Vaudeville is the <laughs> child-friendly descendant of the child-friendly descendant of burlesque and the ancestor of what most of all of the current entertainment has its uh, roots in it. So this is going to be a cool exhibit. We're walking this way. You okay? Sorry. Allison, how are you doing with the Max there? You doing good with the Max? Huh? Yeah. Doing good with Max? Yeah, she's doing good. So here it is. We're going to walk this way. What a great tree. It's called Vaudeville. Got a lot of construction going on here. A lot of building here at UT, University of Texas at Austin. Vaudeville. We'll maybe see a little bit, a couple things in there. But thanks again for joining us at Candid Travels Texas. This episode was about tactical it's about tactical elocution tactics from the world of acting and theater and professional clergies and professional actors so we'll end it with this and how it is a biblical elocution or or linguistical evocation of reading out loud so this is the Vaudeville started January 29th, end of January, to July 15th. And be prepared to be amazed by comedy, song, magic, acrobats, pantomime, puppetry, animal tricks. Vaudeville. No. High wire aerialist. No. Remember the paw thing, grab his paws. Okay, so anyway, there's a little no. trick Eric will attend to grab his paws no, when I he does. Can't. Here, I got him. Hold it. Okay, see when I hold him, he calms down. Because I'm a little bit more calm than Allison. No. Okay? When I hold him, he calms down. So, once and a quick dog training tip, your energy, your emotional energy, is through this leash. You cannot use those bungee cords or those, you know, the leashes where you let them go like fish lines? It won't work. So now that Allison's calm, I'm gonna hand it to her. Okay, hold it this way, secure. All right, and see he won't because I calmed him down just by holding him. All right, so we might show you a few image, images inside if we're allowed to, but a meetup for those of you guys who watch us if you want. Uh, February, when, what's the day? There's a members only, do you remember? I don't. February 9th. February 9th or 6th. Yeah, at 7, uh, 7 p.m., there's a members only for Harry Ransom Center. So uh, you can go to Harry Ransom Center, become a member for an annual fee. It's not very much. And you can join a special vaudeville party where there's going to be actual vaudevillian performers 
there's food, there's all kinds of stuff. All right, so let's go do a quick couple image of the actual exhibit. Thanks again for joining us at Canada Trail. Of the vaudeville, the recreation. So we are allowed to walk up here. Do you want to walk up here? Yeah, that's what it's for. That's why this ramp is here. We're on stage. This is what it'll feel like if you're on stage. Come on up, Allison, come on up. It's kind of a example type thing. Here, Max, you're on stage. Max is on stage. Woo! Thank you very much. And here are some really cool examples of the Nicholas Brothers from the film The Black Network. I wonder if they could call it the Black Network nowadays. I think it's fine, but some people who are social justice warriors would disagree. <laughs> and here's Anna. Who are they? Who's this? Okay. All right. So let's walk through here. Wow. So yeah, so this is a quick little preview teaser um, for a potential upcoming episode where we can actually spend more time in here, maybe, at the party. Who's this guy? <sighs> White Studios, facsimile of gelatin print. Huh. This is Burt Williams, born in the Bahamas. This guy was in showbiz. All these people are showbiz. Look, here's Al Jolson. Is it? No, it's not. Who is this guy? Burt Williams, <laughs> a natural born gambler. Okay, so it's Burt Williams, not Al Jolson. He's a real. So there's so much history here that you can just enjoy. And here's pretty cool. I'm going to end with this, guys. Some old films of vaudeville. <laughs> Look, we have a scene like that in Venice Nights where our, my character that I play Bobby Parker is on a speed bag at Venice Beach, California. Max, good boy. Wow, look at that speed bag, Allison. Look at that. Allison, look at the speed bag. Yeah. See, if you focus, and this is another dog tactic, if you focus on the other stuff and you more the dog, he'll behave better. Look, he's using two hands and a foot. Look, don't look down. Look at the, if you look up at, the, and just pay, do your own wild look. He's boxing up. Gus Keller, novelty bag puncher, new polo AA, double floor. All right. Cool, huh? 1904. No, that's another one. That's another one. All right. All right, thanks again for joining us at Canada Travels Texas, for joining us for a Sunday out, and the tactical tip of reading out loud, which is a professional skill set that's constantly being, you know, enjoyed and done by all professional actors and clergy. And uh, here's a little bit of history from a, a section of acting. And modern day show business is based upon vaudeville, not Shakespearean theater. Uh, but there's elements of theater in this. Some other interesting Irwin Brothers vaudeville posters. Majestic right. Theater in Austin, Texas in 1925. Candid Travels, Texas. Can't act at us for any prayer requests or whatever you might need. Allison's going to demonstrate her ability, uh, what we were talking about. Okay, go ahead, read. Unidentified Photographer, Majestic Theater in Austin, Texas, circa 1925, gelatin silver print, Interstate Theater Collection, Harry Ransom Center. The Majestic Theater opened in 1915 as a vaudeville house in downtown Austin. It was built by Carl Hobetzel as part of the Interstate Vaudeville Circuit, one of the largest vaudeville circuits in the South and West. It has played host to a range of acts including Harry Hugh and Mae West and a touring company of the Zinkiel Follies. In 1930, Paramount Pictures purchased the building and renamed it the Paramount Theater. It continues to present stage performances and film screens at its historic building on Congress Avenue at 8th Street. So if you watch our show, South by Southwest, we did have uh, an episode of what we shot there for the premiere of the movie Chef for John Favreau. And also the first thing we did when, we, when I came home to Austin was what? My brother Paul's uh, 
Festivus, right? Yeah. That was at the Paramount. All right, well, it's now historical. I don't think there's a lot of stuff going on now, but come and enjoy it. Vaudeville, Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia had only one city. California, nothing. <laughs> so vaudeville. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. All right.